news cameras capture the distribution of white envelopes to supporters of presidential bet Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. after his campaign rally in Nueva Ecija, Tuesday, March 15. After inspecting two of these envelopes, Rappler learns these contain 500 peso bills. The Marcos camp denies knowledge of the incident. Comelec Commissioner George Garcia says Wednesday, March 16, he will raise the incident in the on bank's ongoing deliberation. The Omnibus Election Code prohibits any person who gives, offers, or promises money to vote for or against any candidate. Meantime, the Bureau of Internal Revenue confirms it is trying to collect unpaid taxes from the Marcos heirs worth 23 billion pesos in 1997. The amount, however, may have already reached 200 billion pesos based on estimates of lawyers. In a letter to Isko Moreno's Action Democratico Party, BIR Chief Cesar Dulay says the BIR sent a written demand to the Marcos heirs on December 2, 2021 regarding their tax liability. The court approved Marcos heirs are Emelda Marcos and Marcos Jr. Action Democratico has been digging into the estate tax deficiency of the Marcos family, while the Marcos camp has been dodging it. This prompted Action to send letters to the BIR and the Presidential Commission on Good Government, or PCGG. PCGG tells Moreno's camp in a March 11 letter, the judgment on the case has become final and executory. A 1997 Supreme Court ruling that sustained a Court of Appeals decision declared Marcos's estate to have a tax deficiency of 23 billion pesos. In that decision, the Supreme Court said the ruling was final and unappealable. Presidential bet and Vice President Lenny Robredo and running mate Senator Kiko Pangilinan appealed to thousands of supporters in General Santos City to knock on doors and help increase their numbers. On Tuesday, March 15, the Lenny Kiko tandem campaigns in Mindanao for the third time in a bid to gain more voters in the region where they are weakest. This based on major pre-election polls which ranked the Marcos Duterte duo as the leading president-vice president tandem in Mindanao. This is the first time for the Lenny Kiko tandem to campaign in Sok Sargent region, home court of presidential candidate Senator Manny Pacquiao. Despite being the home turf of Pacquiao, Jen San delivers an estimated 5,000 to 7,000 strong crowd, cheering for Robredo on Tuesday evening. Supporters were soaked due to the intermittent rain, but stayed until the end of the program. Dinatawag ko po kayo ngayon. Lumabas tayo sa ating nakasanayan. Pagkatapos po nating tumindig, tumawid tayo. Hanapin ang hindi pa kabilang sa ating hanay. Araw-araw, kumausap ng mga tao at kumatok sa mga pinto, pakinggan ang mga kwento ng kapwa, in the latest Pulse Asia survey done in February, Marcos, with a 60% voter preference rating, maintains the top spot in the presidential contest. Robredo is at a distant second at 15%. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. President Rodrigo Duterte approves the proposal of the Department of Finance, or DOF, to provide a monthly subsidy of 200 pesos per household for poor families instead of suspending the excise tax amid rising fuel prices. During a Talk to the People address, Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez III proposes to provide additional aid through unconditional cash transfers to the bottom 50% of all Filipino households. This amounts to 200 pesos per month per household for a year. Dominguez says around 12 million households will benefit and a total budget required for this amounts to 33.1 billion pesos. Dominguez acknowledges the subsidy is not enough, yet states that this is what we can afford as of this time. Duterte responds to the recommendation deferring to Dominguez. 
Sige, yun ang policy ng Executive Department. In a press briefing, Presidential Spokesperson Martin Andanar confirms this means Duterte approves the proposal. Kung kailan po ito uh, may bibigay, hintayin muna natin lumabas ang guidelines po ng Department of Budget and Management. Dominguez says targeted relief or issuing a subsidy to the most vulnerable sectors is a better alternative to suspending excise tax. After sharing the latter approach may significantly affect the 2022 government revenue. Calls have been made to suspend excise tax, some by presidential and vice presidential candidates. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says Wednesday, March 16, peace talks with Russia sound more realistic, but more time is needed. This as Russian airstrikes kill five people in the capital, Kyiv, and the refugee tally from Moscow's invasion reaches three million. Moscow has not captured any of Ukraine's ten biggest cities following its incursion, the largest assault on a European state since 1945. Ukrainian officials raise hopes the war could end possibly by May, saying Moscow may be coming to terms with its failure to impose a new government in Kyiv by force as it runs out of fresh troops. In a hint of possible compromise, Zelensky earlier said Ukraine was prepared to accept security guarantees from the West that stopped short of its long-term goal of joining NATO. Moscow sees any future Ukraine membership of the Western alliance as a threat and has demanded guarantees it will never join. Meantime, the U.S. Senate unanimously passes a resolution condemning Russian President Vladimir Putin as a war criminal. The resolution encourages the International Criminal Court in The Hague and other nations to target the Russian military in any investigation of war crimes committed during Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Philippine Olympic Committee or POC President Abraham Bambol Tolentino says the POC is waiting for confirmation from World Athletics to allow pole vaulter EJ Obiena to compete in the regional biennial meet. This after Tolentino includes Obiena in the Vietnam Sea Games entry by names list. Tolentino laments the process could be smoother if the Philippine Amateur Track and Field Association or PATAFA endorsed Obiena's participation. After Patafa decided to remove Obiena from the Philippine Athletics roster to the SEA Games, POC announced the National Olympic Committee will privately fund the world number 5 pole vaulter. If World Athletics will not approve Obiena's bid, the POC president will bring the issue up to the Vietnam SEA Games Organizing Committee. 